Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you my new favorite way of adding the Orton Glow effect in Photoshop, thanks to this comment by Jamie Lakayok. I hope I pronounced that name right. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw files from the link in the description of the video and now let's jump into it. Just a heads up, if you are just here for the Orton Glow effect, check the chapters of the video because I will be showing everything from start to finish, which means we are starting with the raw adjustments in the camera raw editor. And here we are working with two images. Here, this is the base image. And I have shot another one with my finger covering the sun. And the reason for me to do that is simply we are getting a way clearer foreground by doing it that way. As you can see, there is no lens flare going on in the foreground while in the space image, it is looking pretty dirty in here. So we're going to merge those two images later in Photoshop, but now let's go through the basics real quick. I am going to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, just to lessen the contrast a bit. And then let's bring up the basic panel. Oh, and by the way, of course, we are working with HDR files to get a wider dynamic range since we're shooting directly against the sun with some deep shadows in the foreground. So that will be useful as you can see in a minute. Now, we are working with the golden hour shot. That means I want to bring up the temperature, introducing some more warm tones to this image overall. Let's bring it up a little more, just like that. And I want to work on the brightness of the image. Right away, you can see there is a little bit of underexposure going on as well as some overexposure. So the next step for me would be to bring up the exposure very slightly, getting some more details out of the foreground. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the highlights quite a bit. I'm not going to drop them all the way down. If there's still a little bit of overexposure right in this area, I think that's totally fine. Since after all, it's the sun. And if that's overexposed, that's really not a big deal. Now, how can we get out some more details of the foreground simply by bringing up the shadows. So let's do that. And I also want to raise the blacks for the same effect. Of course, this will lessen the overall contrast, but we can tweak that later. For now, I do want to bring in some texture, giving the smaller details some more sharpness. And at the same time, I want to bring down the clarity. This already serves kind of like a Orton Glow effect by making the overall shot a little softer. So you can see that as the base of our Orton Glow effect. To make it stronger, you could bring down the dehaze as well. You can see how this really softens the image, but I do want to go in the other direction. And by bringing up the dehaze, I'm going to add a little more contrast. This will also make the shot darker again, so just keep that in mind. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance. That looks perfect. So with the basic adjustments out of the way, let's continue working on areas locally. For that, as always, we're going to rely on masking. And I want to start by making the blue part of the sky darker and thus adding more contrast. So how can we target the blue part of the sky? Simply by using a range mask. So click on range and here we are choosing color range. With that selected, click in the blue part and you can see how we can nicely target the blue area. We can refine that area a little more so less of the clouds will get selected. Just bring that refine slider down. And I also want the bottom part of the sky to be brighter. That means I need to subtract a linear gradient and just dragging it up like this so only really the top part of that blue area will get darkened and to do that i'm bringing down the exposure just like that wonderful now the next thing that needs some adjustments is the foreground obviously so here we can choose a simple linear gradient and i'm trying to cover basically the whole foreground like this and what I want to do here is to simply raise the clarity, which works really, really great on fields like that. You can see we get a lot more detail and contrast. And besides the clarity, I also want to add some texture. Just don't want to overdo it, but this looks fine to me. Then I do want to darken the very near foreground right there. Again, I'm just using a linear gradient, dragging it up like that. And in here, I am going to bring down the exposure. This will lead to more underexposure, but I think 
in that very near foreground, it's totally fine. I can adjust it some more like this, but I'm quite happy with that for now. And then let's use another linear gradient covering most of the foreground. And this time I don't want to change the very near foreground. So again, I'm making use of the subtract button and choose a linear gradient and just remove parts of that foreground selection. Let's get it a little higher like this. All right. Now what I want to do with the top part of that field is to bring in some more exposure. So let's raise it. I also want to raise the contrast and maybe even introduce some more highlights. And since we have selected a bit of the sky right there, I just want to be safe and say subtract and here select the sky. So we are getting a proper mask right here. All right, that looks great. Now there's one more thing I want to add. Again, just another linear gradient for the very top part of the sky. And again, just bring down the exposure very, very slightly. Perfect. So that's it for the masking stuff. We can compare to before without the masking, with the masking. As always, you can see it's a very big transformation. So let's continue doing a little bit of color grading. I want to start in the color mixer for that. I'm not touching the hue, but I want to change the saturation. Actually, first let's adjust the luminance. With the luminance, we can do two things. We can make the foreground a little brighter and the blue part in the sky a little darker. Simply by bringing down the blue luminance and raising the green luminance. Just like that. Again, I can toggle the visibility so you can see the difference from before to after. Just adding a bit more contrast by applying these changes. Now let's head over into the saturation. And I do want to bring up the orange saturation as well as the yellow saturation and even the blue saturation. Perfect. Now, one more thing I want to do is the split toning within the color grading tab. Here, I just want to target the highlights, giving them some more of a golden hour look. So here we are in the highlights. I'm setting up the hue somewhere in the warm orange to yellow range right here. And I'm bringing up the saturation just a notch. Really don't want to overdo the split toning in this case. I think a subtle result is looking way better. All right. Then finally, we could head down into the calibration tab and just bring up the blue primary saturation a notch. But wow, that's looking really, really good. So we're almost done. Just one more thing I want to do. And that's, of course, the sharpening in the details tab. As always, I'm bringing down the radius, increase the details, add a little bit of masking because we only want the subject to get sharpened like that and bring up the sharpening. And here we have our image after the raw adjustments. Before, after. Of course, we need to apply the same settings on the second image. So let's hold down shift and click on the thumbnail, right click, synchronize settings, make sure to check all and hit OK. And now you can see it pretty clearly how the foreground looks completely different with the sun covered by my finger. Here we have a very dirty foreground and while here it's super clear. Now let's combine these two shots in Photoshop. I'm going to select both of them and click on open objects. To quickly stack those images in one Photoshop file, I'm going to hit Ctrl A to select all, then Ctrl C to copy it. Now let's go over to the base image and here I'm simply pressing Ctrl V. Now we just need to mask out my hand. So I'm going to apply a layer mask. Let's zoom in a bit. And I'm going to use the brush tool by pressing B. Set the foreground color to black since you want to mask out that finger. And I'm using a pretty hard brush this time. And then I'm just starting to brush over the finger. Of course, right there around the sun, it needs a little more tweaking. So I'm going to use a bigger brush and make it much softer. And then I'm just brushing in all those light rays. Just making sure the foreground is not that affected by it. I think that looks pretty good. 
Next up, I do want to enhance the glow some more. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light. Again, we are making use of the brush and I want to pick a warm color tone from those light rays. So I'm just holding down the Alt key and click in here. And this foreground color is a little bit too dark. So I'm going to bring up the brightness and maybe lessen the saturation a notch. Okay. To add the glow effect, we want to bring down the brush opacity, otherwise this would be way too strong. I'm always going with around 10%. Now just painting in a little glow around the brighter spots. Just like that, wonderful. Then let's merge everything into a single layer by hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. And with this layer, I do want to fix the vignetting on top and there's some strange things going on in the dead corner. So let's use the spot healing brush, click in here once, and click out down there as well. And it's fixed. Also, I want to slightly crop the image just to get rid of any gaps at the top. Now comes the autumn glow effect. And for this, we are going to make use of the fade comment. This is something I have never heard about in over a decade of using Photoshop. So I was quite surprised hearing about that. To set this up, first let's duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J. And for the autumn glow, of course we want to apply some Gaussian blur. Nothing has changed about that. So let's go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And here you can play around with the radius as you want. I think this is looking pretty good since we still have a little bit of detail left in the image. So I'm going to apply it like this. And right after applying this effect, it's very important to use that fade comment because otherwise you can't use it. To do that, let's head into the edit menu and here you will find fade Gaussian blur. Let's click on that. Here, it's important to make sure the preview box is checked, otherwise you can't see the effect this has on the image. At first, you can see it, nothing really happens. But what we can do, as the name suggests, with the fade effect, we can simply fade this effect a little more. So we, for that, we have the opacity slider and we can also choose a different blending mode. This means if we lower the opacity, we will reduce the effect of the Gaussian blur on this layer. So let's say we want to bring it down to around 30%, which I think looks pretty good. And then we can further adjust the blending mode. Right now it's at normal, but for the autumn glow effect, what I find to work the best is something like lighten or screen, or maybe even lighter color. I think lighter color might actually be the best solution for this image. And you can still play around with the opacity a bit, making it slightly stronger or weaker. Let's go with around 30%. And once you're happy with those adjustments, just hit OK. And here we have the autumn glow effect added with the fade effect. Right here you can see you can still change the blending mode and the opacity of the layer itself, since with the fade effect, we only have adjusted the recently applied Gaussian blur effect, not that layer itself. And that's how to apply the autumn glow effect using the fade comment. Now we can tweak this image some more, but for that I will be using the TK panel plugin. Actually, I think I want to mask out a bit of the glow on the foreground. Let's apply a layer mask, grab the brush tool, bring back the brush opacity to 100. And now I'm just brushing over the darkest spots, which in my opinion, don't really need glow. Just like that. Now again, I want to merge everything into a single layer. So I'm going to hit Control Shift Alt E. And with that layer, let's head into Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. What I want to apply here is first the Pro Contrast effect, just getting some more contrast in this image. That looks pretty good to me. I want to keep it subtle. And then let's add another effect and I'm going with the polarization effect this time. Let's bring up the strength just a bit. And what this does is it just makes the colors a bit stronger. You can see it especially right there in the sky between the warm golden clouds and the blue part of the sky. So I really like how this looks. Let's apply it like this. Perfect. And here we have the finished image. 
So I hope this Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting. Of course, as always, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.